Welcome and thank you for your time. Um, it's it's good to have you. When I was doing a bit of research for this, I went back and looked at an article that I wrote, and it was ten years ago that I wrote about you competing at Sandown. So um, you've been you've been driving Lotus and racing Lotus for a long time. How come? How did you get to choose Lotus, and how come you end up racing so successfully? Um, well, I guess Lotus came about. I was uh, my my background was actually racing dirt bikes. <laughs> race dirt bikes and love that and the bike would still do that today but uh, I busted myself up a few too many times and decided that um, that uh, maybe four wheels was a bit safer and started getting involved in, in motorsport that way and a friend of mine was uh, was actually racing in the Lotus Trophy over in Perth and I went over uh, happened to be working in Perth at the time called in and they announced at that meeting that uh, the Lotus Trophy was going to race at Bathurst that year and that was 2005 so that's how far back it goes so I like the idea of racing at Bathurst. Uh, I knew nothing about Lotus at the time. Um, didn't really know much about their products or anything, but uh, the appeal for me was to race at Bathurst. Um, if I signed up for the Lotus Trophy that year, it meant I could, I could drive a car at Bathurst, and that's, yeah, that was a long time dream. So that's how I got involved in Lotus. I, uh, I leased in a lease in that Lotus Trophy series and um, had a ball and, and got to race at Bathurst. So that's how it all really started. And, and given that, that was 15 years ago, which is a long time and a short time. Your total life's changed because you're now <laughs> heading up the operation here in Melbourne, yeah. which was a career change for you. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I guess um, obviously getting involved with Lotus back then, I, I got involved with uh, Lee. He came out and um, from the UK about that same time, 2006, 2007, Lee Nappett came out and... Um, he had a really good uh, source of cheap Lotus products from the UK. And uh, so I hooked up with him because in the Lotus Trophy, you needed a lot of Lotus products. Um, it was a bit of a crash and bass series there. So Lee and I became mates probably in 2006, 2007, you know, through to 09, we did a lot of racing together. And I guess since then, I've always been involved with Simply Sports Cars, um, running events. We started the Lotus Only Track Days, I don't know, probably eight or so years ago. Um, so have had a very close association with Simply Sports Cars for all that time. I was running an IT company at the time and then um, uh, a few things sort of come together. Someone wanted to buy the IT company. I was ready to go. And, uh, and Simply Sports Cars were looking at setting up a, a facility down in Melbourne and um, it all sort of came together at the same time. I thought, of, why not? Let's have a change and, and get involved in, in some cars, something I've been passionate about for a long time. Sounds like it was meant to be. So that gives us a chance to ask you about updating what's happening with Simply Sports Cars taking over Lotus Melbourne. Pat, can you just take us through mm -hmm. what's happened over the last few months that see that this has come about? Yeah, sure. So, um, as most people would be aware, yeah, there was two Lotus facilities down in Melbourne for, for the last couple of years. We had um, Simply Sports Cars over in South Melbourne uh, were there in, in a couple of help with race cars and, and you know, aftermarket products. And then Zagami were running the Lotus Melbourne. Mel Lotus Melbourne facility selling new cars as well as the service department. Um, in January this year, uh, Bruce, who was running the operation here, got, got an opportunity to move to a, to a different role within Zagami, and that was, uh, that was a bit of, um, oh God, what do we do now as Bruce goes? Because Bruce had done such a great job of, of building the community and, and I think getting the Zagami group to realise that Lotus isn't like the other products that they sell. Um, it's not really a product where it's, uh, you know, have, have a shiny dealership and people come in and buy their cars and they bring them back when they need to be serviced. You know, we, we see Lotus as, uh, as a bit of a journey. You know, you come get your car and then we go on this journey together on using the car, you know, doing events together, doing a, that sort of stuff. And, um, and Bruce did a great job of, uh, yeah, that, I think that's what Melbourne was missing you know, for the last few years. And Bruce, Bruce and Reese did a good job of building all that up. But um, 
where he's got a, a great opportunity to move to a, a sort of a dream role within the Zagami group. And when he took that, it was it was like, oh God, what do we do now? And uh, that's when Zagami and Simply Sports Cars got together and agreed that the best way forward is if uh, if Simply Sports Cars came in and started running the Lotus Melbourne facility. And we have just the one facility in Melbourne. So that's how it called about. Um, for our point of view, we're, we're loving the new digs here. It's uh, it's nice to be sitting in an air-conditioned showroom today and it's 23 degrees in here and four degrees out there in the workshop. Um, I find myself spending a lot less time in the workshop these days. There's always an excuse to do something more on the computer, uh, but the workshop's amazing. Um, you know, having that, that facility out there, which we'll, we'll go out and have a bit of a look around at the moment, but uh, yeah, we're loving it. So if effectively now, um, Zagami's your landlord and you're, you're running the joint. Simply Sports Guy's running the the whole operation that's right yeah so we're, we're running their dealerships in uh in sydney and melbourne um Zagami is still the dealer in adelaide um we have motorline as our dealer up in uh in brisbane and then auto strata over in perth so it's still a you know a good network australia wide um but yeah essentially the the sydney and melbourne are now run by simply sports cars I'm glad you said nice things about Bruce because I noticed he's joined us. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. That's why I said. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> you, you might want to take the opportunity. I think Anthony's there. You might like to introduce Anthony to us. Yeah, sure. So um, part of building the team up here in, in Melbourne was um, recognising that, well, we needed someone to fill Bruce's shoes and take over the sales role. So Anthony is here. You can't actually hear us at the moment, but Anthony, so uh, um, so Anthony's joined us uh, in the in the last month, um, months. last two months. Took on a uh, a role of a sports car salesperson in the middle of a pandemic, which is uh, not putting me <laughs> under much pressure at all. But um, but uh, yeah, it's great to actually have someone on board who can uh, focus purely on the. Uh, on the on the car sales side of it, I think even Bruce would agree. Running running the dealership is is a fair bit of work, and having to find the time to to focus on the sales side of it's pretty tough as well. But uh, it's great that Anthony's here to help us with that. Uh, Anthony has a lot of experience in the auto industry. He's been twenty five years or so in various yeah retail um, and also at a distributor level as well. So. Is actually helping us not only in the retail sales but also on the Lotus Cars Australia distribution side as well, getting involved in that sort of stuff. So, uh, so it's been good. Um, it's been a great relief for me not having to worry about that and knowing all the sales stuff is getting done. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyone who's yeah, looking at a new or used car or whatever, then uh, Anthony's probably going to be the person that you're dealing with down here in Melbourne. So it's great to have him board on part of the team down here. Thanks, Mark. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that. That's really great. Now, before we head into the uh, cold um, garage out the back, which I know people are interested in, uh, could you bring us up to date on the Driving Academy? Uh, sure. Yeah, well, the Driving Academy is something we started at the start of the year. Uh, we, we got one under our belt in February before the lockdown, which was, which was great. It happened just before that. So uh, I think you know, having been involved in driver training and uh, driving events, we always see at Lotus as a bit of a hole with the with the actual driver training side of it. There's a lot of um, you rock up at a uh, at a track day, and if they have drivers instructors there, they're sort of waiting at the pit lane, and you know, hop down the end of pit lane, and someone hops in your car and gives you a few tips, and maybe they'll they'll do it again at the end of the day. Um, and what it kind of lacks is the consistency of the instructors so we wanted to set up something uh, that had some consistent dates uh, that that was you know happened regularly but also we could have some consistent instruction so um, we set up a thing we've, we've called it the Lotus Melbourne Driving Academy um, and basically what it is we've booked, um, we've teamed with Evolve Driver Training many people might be familiar with those guys and uh, we've got uh, myself um, Tony Delberto, who's a V8 supercar driver, um, TCR driver, drives for Team Penske, very experienced. And he's also raced our Lotus products with, in the Australian Performance Car Championship. So he's a very good instructor, uh, funny bloke, 
Um, Alex, our lead technician, is also there. So the idea is we take six or so people along to, to those days, set up a garage with all the Lotus things and provide the track support, um, have a consistency with the driving instructors. Uh, we take along some other tools. We had our MoTeC data logging stuff down there. So uh, we had some guys along where we put the data loggers in, were able to find where they needed to focus and and you know on that on that day we had some guys coming away that was six seconds lap faster at the end of that day compared to the start so uh so yeah we're looking forward to getting back into it we're, we're back down at Phillip Island on the 22nd of June um so it's been a shame that, that uh, we haven't been able to run those days but we're certainly looking forward to get back into it and two tracks was that right Yeah, we, we well, the idea at the start of the year was to alternate. Uh, so we have one every month, uh, alternating between Phillip Island and Sandown. Um, we kind of, it looks as though that will pick back up again, but there might even be a couple of extra dates. So yes, it's Phillip Island, 22nd of June this month. That one's booked out at the moment. Then we're 3rd of July back at Sandown and then August is back at Phillip Island, then back at Sandown, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I don't recall the pricing. I know I thought it was very, very reasonable for what you were getting. Where can people go to find that? Yeah, there's a good question. Um, there was an email that went out. I should have gone to all the, the Lotus Melbourne owners if they're on our database. If not, then please shoot me an email to um, mark at simplysportscars.com to get on to the, uh, to the, um, to the mailing list. Um, at the moment, we haven't. I haven't got a published website with the dates because with the lockdown, we're still yeah. confirming dates here and there. So the only ones that I know that are confirmed at the moment are twenty second of June, Philip Island, third of July it's at uh, at Sandown for those driving academy dates. But um, we'll get some information up on the Simple Sports Cars website when we know we can lock the other dates in. Oh, good. Thanks for that. Um... Like I say, well, were anybody who's interested, from what I read about it, it looked like really good value. Um, we need to yeah, look, it, it, It's a good... Sorry, I was just about to say, Peter, sorry. It, it is a good value add to Dean's days. Um, Dean at Evolve runs really good track days. Um, they're high-end sort of people that are generally there, high-end cars. It's, it's not usually a day where you have to worry about someone in a, in a $2,000 car trying to outbreak you into term one. Um, there's usually, you know, it's usually full of Porsches, which are always fun to go past on a track and, um, and you know, brands are, are like that. So, so it, Dean runs a great day, but I think what we're bringing as a value add to that day, uh, it, certainly the guys really appreciated it, the one we ran in February. Yeah, good. Thank you. Now, can we ask you two guys to head out into the cold? And give us a look at the Tiger car that you're developing and tell us all about it. Sure. Well, there's, um, on the way there, there's probably a few things to look at. So sure. I think Peter's going to follow me. Which way are you going to follow me around? Peter? We'll go around this way. Okay. So um, just while we're here, we'll, we'll, we can have a little bit of a look around the show. Um, we've got uh, over here a new Exige 4 Temple. Well, are you back on a bit of feedback? Um, um, hang on, who's got feedback? Got feedback? Someone, someone unmuted microphone? the microphone? Is it just, just me that's got the feedback? No, I think it's me. Hang on. Is that better? Anyway, we'll try that. Um, so, we've got the um, so we've got the Exige 410, a uh, brand new one for the showroom. Um, at Simply Sports Cars, we're also the importer for KTM cars. So over here is a KTM crossbow. Uh, at the moment, we share the space here with, um, with Caterham and Morgan. So we have a Caterham over here. One quickly. We'll get to an Evora 410. Um, fun little car to, 
get around in. Um, if we, that kind of covers the showroom part. Another Exige 410 down the back. Um, some products over in the wall. We probably don't want to scan over that way, do we? At the moment. So out the back is our, um, well, a new workshop for us, but not for Lodge Melbourne, of course. I cracked the whip today and got the boys to tidy it all up. <laughs> um, so down the side, some pictures of our lifestyle things uh, up on the walls. Um, as I touched on before, at, um, at Simply Ports Cars and at Lotus Cars Australia, we're really big on our event stuff. And, and we sort of, our philosophy is more about, uh, we think we sell lifestyles um, you just need a car to, to join in the lifestyle. And so I know with Peter can get some around on some of those pictures up on the walls is all about some of the lifestyle stuff that uh, we get up to. Um, lots of rallies and racing and track days. Um, it's, a, it's a big part of what we do. Um, and then I wheeled out a couple of uh, cars that I thought might be interesting to talk about while we make it over to the... Uh, to the target car. Um, this one here is a, a Lotus 211, which uh, basically is the same car as a, uh, an Elise 111R or, or an S2 Exige, um, but with a lightweight body on it. So no roof or doors or glass or anything like that. Uh, 670 kilos is all it weighs. Um, and it's, it's a little rocket ship. And but the amazing thing about this car, it's the only one in the world that is still brand new. It's a, it's a 2010 car and uh, can't be registered in Australia. It's never been to the track, so therefore it has delivery kilometres on it. I think last time we looked, it was less than two kilometres on it. So uh, um, pr pretty special car. There is now one more 211 in the country. Um, someone's imported one, John's imported one down in Tasmania. So we had it here for, for a couple of weeks. Uh, and he, I just drove it onto the Spirit of Tasmania the other day for him. But uh, so there's now two eleven, two two elevens in the country. Um, but yeah, this one's pretty special because it's it's the only one in the world that's still brand new. Um, the other thing we've got over here is a car maybe not too many people have seen. This is the Exige 410. It was a limited edition car. Oh, sorry, the Exige 430 Cup edition. Um, we only bought ten of these into the country. And they're all, they all have a unique color. So this is your only blue Exige Cup 430 in the country. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty special car. It's, uh, well, until they built the 311 was the fastest car that, uh, that Lotus had produced. Uh, so that's a pretty cool one. Um, another Exige 410, brand new, in stock, looking for a new home. I know you're out there. Uh, it's ready to go. Give Anthony a call. He's prepared to do a deal. Um, and then over here is actually my race car. So this is this is a car I bought in uh, in 2006 to uh, to run in the Lotus Trophy. Um, unfortunately, the series car? fell over halfway through that year. I think was that, was that a car Mark, a Japanese guy raced here first. That's right, yeah. Um, in 2005, there was a Japanese guy who came over. He'd won everything in Japan. He'd come over to uh, take on Australia. Um, I don't remember his real surname, but we used to call him Crashashima. Um, <laughs> he, he, managed to, uh, he managed to tear all the corners off the car pretty much in the, in the 05 season. And I bought it with, uh, I think it had two or three corners still on it when I got it and, uh, and fixed it up. And then raced it in the 2006. I think the first time I actually sat in the car was driving it onto the grid at the Clipsal 500 in 2006. So that was, uh, that was pretty special. Um, but this car has probably been a development car for a lot of the Simply Sports Cars products. So the original supercharger kit that we developed at Simply Sports Cars was actually developed with this car. So we pushed it along with the race program, I think in uh, 2008 or 2009, we went to the Bathurst 12 hour 
and uh, and raced there and struggled a little bit because the standard supercharger on the car was just overheating way too much. So we pushed along with the, the TVS upgrade that is now a lot on a lot of the cars in Australia. Um, and we went back from February to October. Uh, we managed to go 22 seconds a lap faster with the uh, with supercharger upgrade. So it was pretty impressive. I remember driving up the hill at Mountain Straight and getting on the radio to Lee and saying, oh, my God, this thing is just ridiculous. It was so fast. So, yeah, to make up 20 sec- seconds uh, on a lap around Bathurst was pretty special. So, um, but, yeah, it's not a lot of work, this car. It was... Uh, uh, it's competed in more Bathurst 12 hours than any other car because when the Bathurst 12 hour first started uh, in 2008 and nine, it was a production car race for the likes of Evos and Subarus and everything else. So the, then the car was normally aspirated and it was eligible uh, to race with the production cars. And in 2010, they moved to GT cars and we were then racing in the Australian GT championship with the new supercharger on it. So the car became eligible in the GT categories as well. So it's the only car that's actually competed in, in all those different um, versions of the, of the 12 hour. So it's done a lot of work. Um, it's a great little toy, but uh, it's, it's pretty highly strung though. It's, it's 500 horsepower at the moment, a 1.8 litre supercharged engine that's 500 horsepower and the car weighs 870 kilos. So uh, it's a lot of fun to get in and, and have a bit of a blast around in. And what's the lap time around Bathurst in that in the end? Uh, it's done a two sixteen um, around Bathurst. Uh, but I can't remember what class we're in. I know we've been in classes where we weren't supposed to go any any faster than uh, than two two eighteens or something like that. And I think in one of the practice sessions I did a two sixteen, and we had to sort of back off a bit from there. So, um, but that's pretty quick around Bathurst, 287 kilometres an hour down the straight we did at one stage. So going up over the rise uh, down Comrod at 287 gets your attention. The first couple of times you do it, you think the car's going to take off. But uh, yeah, for a, for a little car like that with virtually no aero because it had to be production car spec, we weren't allowed to change the wings or anything on it. Um, yeah, 287 was a pretty wild ride. <laughs> Thanks for that. Now, can we have a have a look at that um, Tiger car? Yeah. So we go around over this side. Um, so this is a this is a car we built for a customer last year. Originally, it was uh, an Exige 410, and uh, well, still is an Exige 410 at the moment. Um, but we built this car for the customer to race in um, Targa West last year. And basically we took a brand new Exige 410. We put a roll cage in it and he went racing and came second outright in uh, at Targa WA. He had a great battle with, uh, with a pretty heavily modified Porsche over there. But um, this year, Simply Sports Cars have been recognized as a manufacturer by uh, Targa Australia, which means we are allowed to build a specification and build our own Exige Targa car. And that's what this car is here. So a uh, few extra things on top of the, of the 410. Um, can we get around this side of it, Peter? Get to the business end. How are you going for power? We've got some power here if you need it. But... I don't know whether Peter needs power. Yeah. Get there. So we uh, standard Exige 410 with a roll cage and added a few of our goodies to it. So uh, we've added our larger supercharger. This is uh, the 1900 supercharger that we developed with, um, with Harris, charge cooled. Um, we've put some forged internals in the engine and um, We've developed some exhaust system for it. There's some um, tuned length headers and things like that in there. Uh, we've sent the shocks back over to Nitron to get a little travel stuff. Uh, we've added a MoTeC engine management system to it. Um, but we're expecting to get 
somewhere between 550 and 580 horsepower out of the out of the V6 now. So uh, so that's that's the right amount of power. It's a pretty big increase from 410 horsepower. Um, but one of the other things we've bolted into here, which may be a little bit difficult to get to, but there's some nice shiny bits down here. Can you get to it, Peter? If we can get down in here. I don't know whether you can see all this beautiful CNC machined gearbox casing down there. And what that is is a speed sequential gearbox. And um, we've uh, modified the steering wheel a little bit so that it has some flappy paddles. So a uh, sequential gearbox with paddle shift. And um, we're sort of guesstimating with the, with the paddle shift alone and not having to change gears with the H pattern, that that'll be about uh, one to one and a half seconds the lap faster per kilometer. So in a, uh, in a 20 kilometer stage, that's, uh, that's a, a massive gain. So yeah, that's one of the projects we've been up to. <laughs> Thank you for that. It was good to see that car. I appreciated it. Uh, it was worth you getting cold. I've got a couple. Yeah. The last question was, um, and I've got a couple more. Uh, you, you quoted the advantages of the Tiger car having its um, flappy paddle gear change for, for that sort of event. Would it be yep. worthwhile for a, a, a circuit racing car, do you think? Um, yes, um, obviously the time savings are, are huge, you know, the, the flappy paddle can change gears in, in no time compared to a H pattern. But I'd still argue that uh, from a pure driving perspective, having, having driven both, I mean, the flappy paddle is great, it, it saves a lot of time, you know, when, you, when you're looking at data traces, you look at a speed curve and it just does not have a bump in it when it when it changes gear the thing just keeps on accelerating it's, pr it's pretty amazing whereas you know on a h pattern there's always uh you know six tenths of a second or so where you're actually off the power to change the gear and um yeah. and your speed trace just flattens out so it's obviously got benefits to um uh, to, for speed, as well as you know, it's it's nearly impossible to miss shift a gear for a flappy paddle. So uh, there's obviously benefits there when you know you're not accidentally plucking um, sort of fourth gear instead of sixth and blowing engines in the front. Back to the gearbox. Um, what mods were necessary? You know, what did you have to do to create that sequential gearbox and the paddle shift? Um, we, we, we actually got it as a kit. It's, it's actually developed by a company called X-Shift, uh, Czechoslovakian company. And um, we'd been working with uh, a team over in Holland that had been racing it. We, we, um, we supplied parts for, for a team over there. So we'd been watching the project pretty closely. Um, but what we do differently to what others are doing is we're controlling it with a MoTeC ECU. Um, one of the things I did early on in racing was got involved with MoTeC products. Um, so we we have a lot of experience with their gear and um, we've been able to set the MoTeC ECU up to actually control the gearbox, which is pretty handy because it, it can then do all the ignition cuts and you know do all the lockouts to make sure you don't go down a gear if the revs are too high and all that sort of stuff. So basically mounted some paddles onto the wheel, um, put some switches to feed into the MoTeC and then um, set up some things to get the MoTeC to uh, control a, a pneumatic uh, actuator to shift the gear up and down. Um, but yeah, so physically not a lot, but uh, electronically quite a bit. And it's, um, it's worth telling people if they don't know that MoTeC's a Melbourne based company that's been a huge success. Yeah, that's right. There's, um, you know, if we look at that car out there, there's actually a lot of Australian content in it. Um, you know, Harrop is who we work with to work with the supercharger kit for it. So, um, you know, that's that whole supercharger charge cord system there is was developed jointly by ourselves and Harrop. Um, so that's a Melbourne-based company, and uh, Motec are also yeah, a Melbourne-based company, very successful with the. Uh, 
with that ECU and Dash line of products. So, and it's great because you know, we have direct links to that. I can pick up the phone and call both of those companies tomorrow if I've got an issue and they can help support us and point us in the right direction to get it going. Yeah, yeah, thank you.